All right. Who were the sons of God in Genesis? Got to be one of my top 10 questions I hear all the time. We're going to read about it. Genesis chapter 6. This is the Nephilim, the giants in the earth in those days. Archaeology, ancient history, forbidden archaeology. You know, all of these oops art, oops artifacts. You know, they just found these humongous uh, pictures of a griffin and a dragon you know, that weigh many tons there in Siberia. And they're like, oh, well, how did this 200 ton rock get on the Temple of Baal back in Syria and all this kind of stuff? Okay, let's get to this in Scripture. It's Genesis chapter 6, verse number 2. That the, sons, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now we're going to get to verse 4. It says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. And here's the causation of the giants. When the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. Now this is pre-flood. The giants would have been killed during the flood. Now, when you get to the nation of Israel conquering Canaan, you see the giants again. Been a lot of speculation. How did the giants make it through the flood? Um, well, we know all human beings were killed during the flood, so the giants would have been killed during the flood. Some people say, well, the sons of God are obviously fallen angels. We're going to look at that in just a moment. So there were still fallen angels. They did not get killed in the flood, and so they were able to procreate angels after the flood. Some people have postulated, and they always pick on Ham, that Ham's wife was impregnated by one of these sons of God. And so when she got on the ark, that she was pregnant with the son of God. Now, there's a lot of problems with that, because that means she had been given birth on the ark. <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, others try to say that the giant's after the flood were the people before the flood and there's a lot of evidence for this that people and plants before the flood because it was closer to the Garden of Eden and because there were more ideal growing seasons such as people were living to be 900 plus years of age and all this that everything was just bigger before the flood and then immediately after the flood you see people's lifespans like Noah was 950 when he died going rapidly down uh, you know 500 years or less after the flood you have Abraham dying at 175 and he was considered to be old and full of days and then another three to four hundred years you have Moses dying at 120 his strength not diminished and he was old and full of days and actually, verse 3 in Genesis 6 seems to indicate the 120 years. That's a long story. A lot of different interpretations there. But, and then we know down to David's day, it was 70 years, and by reason of strength, plus 10, uh, four score years. So, who were these sons of God? Let's look at the different issues. Now, probably in evangelical Christianity, the two major views are they are the sons of uh, Adam through the Sethite line. That Seth was a godly person that people began to call upon the name of the Lord during his time and that they were, were godly. Now that begs the question, how would the Sethite line the sons of God, because then they would go back to like Luke 3.38, that Adam was the son of God. Not in the sense of Jesus was the son of God, but God was his father. God was his direct progenitor, so to speak. And so then Seth, it says, is in the image of Adam, as Adam was in the image of God. So they would say that that's the Sethite line. Now, how you get giants out of that is the rest of the world was drinking, smoking, partying. Book of Jasher said abort efficiency, even though we'll do a review on the Book of Jasher sometime, Lord willing, through the help of the Holy Ghost. But in Book of Enoch and all this. And, um, and so they were destroying their bodies where the pure Sethite line was 
um, getting big and strong, just like everything else, the megafauna, the dinosaurs before the flood. And that's what caused. And then there's even some of the ancient pseudepigraphal literature that talks about the sons of God, which being the Sethite line, being giants living up on a mountain and the daughters of men trying to seduce them down off that mountain. And again, because they were hurting themselves, it was messing up their DNA, non-beneficial accretions of mutations, and it was just messing them up. And so that's the Sethite line theory. The other is that these sons of God, the Benai Elohim, the sons of God, were angels. They get that from Genesis 38, 6, the sons of God shouted for joy. The Benai Elohim clearly talking about angels there. And they would say every time in the Old Testament you see sons of God, that it is talking about angels. And so they would say just basic biblical interpretation that this is talking about angels. Now some problems with that that you get into is... Did angels, do angels have reproductive qualities? You know, angels are spirits, Hebrews chapter 1. Now, the answer to that they would give is that God is a spirit and he was able to uh, have procreation in the womb of, of Mary. But on the flip side of that is that is God and angels cannot create. So there's some back and forth. Now, when you go to 2 Peter and the book of Jude, it talks about strange flesh. And if you're just reading it straight through, it seems to say that there were benai Elohim, that there's angels, the angels that kept not their first estate. Now, there's some different lines of thoughts. Even the Jews think this was angels, that you had an initial falling of Satan and one third of the angels, as recorded in Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, Revelation chapter 12. And then you have this second falling of angels that they are in uh, bound under chains of darkness. Um, these particular angels are waiting the judgment after they were judged during Noah's flood and this type thing. But it still begs the question, how could angels procreate? Did, did male angels have a procreation system that they could mate with, with women? You know, that's now the flip side of that is people would say, well, they had a digestive system because man did eat angels' food. So manna is angels' food, the corn of heaven, and man ate that. So it's like, whoa, this is like, there's a lot here. Now, the third and far less popular view that may have some credence to it is that the sons of God, that the first sin of mankind, Adam and Eve, was not the failure to be fruitful and multiply. That Adam and Eve were being fruitful and multiplying before the fall because there is an indeterminate amount of time the scripture to my knowledge never says how long it was from creation to the fall just because it seems like it i mean there's things that flow in the bible that are hundreds of years you know you, you have two thousand years of human history in the first 11 chapters so they would say that the offspring of adam and eve in the garden would be the sons of God. And of course, they would not have sinned and they would have been a uh, like a, a much bigger race, a much huger race. And that, that's, that's who this is talking about. A fascinating scripture in Romans of all places, Romans 5.14, may shed some light on that particular viewpoint. You can turn with me if your Bibles, if you'd like. It says 
and this is talking about Adam being the federal head of the human race and sin coming all men. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So you have people that had not sinned like Adam did, but they still had the penalty of death because Adam was the federal head. Who would those persons have been? They would have been the offspring of Adam and Eve in the garden. Now, you might say, Pastor Waldron, who do you think they are? Well, I'm going to tell you who I think they're not. <laughs> I don't think they're the angels. Okay, it says it, they took them wives of all which they chose. Jesus said of angels, he said the angels in heaven neither marry nor are given in marriage. How could a spirit being marry a, uh, a flesh and blood being? How, how would this work? Now, the answer that they would give people that believe they're angels, they'd say, well, it says the angels in heaven don't marry. These angels were on earth, and they were marrying. And they go into all of this... Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce the different names, but of uh, being uh, angels, dem demonic spirits, you know, fallen angels attacking people sexually in the middle of the night and all of this kind of stuff. Well, I'll, I'm just like, so they're having babies like this, like Rosemary's baby or something? Or is this an attack of Satan? I can see Satan attacking in that way, but nobody's being procreative that way. And another thing this does is it tends to lead to like seedal election. I know of people, good apostolic people, Pentecostal, that believe that like a lot of people you meet are the offspring of Satan, that it happened before the flood and it's still happening after the flood. And that that's when Jesus said, you generation of vipers, you know, you're the seed of the serpent and all this kind of stuff. And I know that blends the serpent seed doctrine and all that. We don't, we're, we're just taking kind of a brief overview and bringing some of the questions to the table. So, um, you know, to me, the, uh, the sons of God being the offspring of Adam and Eve, fulfilling the commandments of God before the fall, makes far more sense as I read it than the other views. The second view would be the Sethian view and that the other beings were not getting larger because they were harming themselves as Satan wants them to do. The daughters of men were harming themselves and over the course of, of many centuries that this was this caused them to be smaller that type thing. But uh, anyhow the Nephilim and there's a lot of people that say the Nephilim are coming back. And then you have David Icke saying that the world's leaders are really reptilian lizards. And Queen Elizabeth's a reptilian lizard. And George Bush is a reptilian lizard. And all of this, don't believe it. They're people Jesus hung on the cross for. And you can't be trying to figure out who's a lizard and who's not to be able to preach the gospel. It said to go into all the world. Jesus didn't say go into all the world and teach all nations except the lizard people who are the, really the Nephilim who are going to come back on UFOs. Now that does not mean I don't think Satan may deceive a lot of the world by imitating UFOs. But they're not going to be aliens and they're definitely not going to be Nephilim. And uh, this goes back to the uh, Anunnaki of the Sumerians that supposedly came that the Sumerian literature talks about, taught women how to paint their faces, seduce men, taught men the martial arts, how to conduct war, and all of that. A <sighs> lot there. Keep studying, reading the Word. Know that we're in the end time, and there's lies. Satan's father of lies, and he's beginning to predominate, it seems, and there's a strong delusion. People believe a lie. You better love truth. Get in the Word of truth. Have the Spirit of truth. Go to the Church of truth. The more often you see that day approaching and you'll live in truth. God bless you. Love you. Hope this helped you some.